Good morning and welcome to Easter Lutheran Church. Will you please stand and sing with us? So mercy, mercy seated where the judge should be was guilty, guilty and getting out of jail free. How could it be I didn't get the love I deserved and the only thing he wanted was my heart in return. And every time I think about, every time I thought was the end, I'm caught up in wonder again. Where would I be? Where would I be if it wasn't for the love of God? This song of victory is now my just sing hallelujah for the love of God has set me free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for the love of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah for my love I was God. thirsty, but like a desert turned into a field of green, started breathing, 
When heaven's favor took a hold of me How could it be I'm living with an infinite worth And the one I thought I chose had really chosen me first And every time I think about, every time I thought was the end Oh, I'm caught up in wonder again Where would I be? Where would I be? For my failures and mistakes I would never know the depths of this grace Now my heart is beating for heaven's sake Oh, and for the love of God If it wasn't for my failures and mistakes I would never know the depths of this grace Now my heart is beating for heaven's sake Oh, and for the love of God Where would I be? Where would I be? Now, I am not a morning person. Like, in the summer, I'm a teacher, so in the summer, it's usually like 9.30-ish when I'm ready to kind of get out of bed and face the day. But I'm a teacher, so I have to be to work at 7 and in front of students at 7.30 and ready to go. So I've been struggling this for, with a long time, and so finally I just decided, okay, I'm going to wake up with a different attitude. And I'm going to say, thank you, God for this day. May everything I do be for you and not for me. And by making that shift in my mind, it really helps me be there for my students when I'm in raring to go at 730 in the morning. They're teenagers. They're not quite awake yet either. But um, still, I just, it's thinking about things in a different way. Do I still love mornings? No. But by giving them to God, and putting it in his hands, it really helps me get through the day. Will you please pray with me? Heavenly Father, we are your church. Let all that we do, all that we say, be for your glory, not ours. We thank you for your love, your grace, and always finding us when we lose our way. In your name we pray. Amen. Congregation, you may be seated. And children, you may come up for the children's message during this next song.
see thanks messengers. Thanks messengers. <laughs> How's everyone doing this morning? Good, yeah, me too. Have any of you had any adventures this summer? Have any of you been to a beach? Yeah, some of you played in the sand, played in the beach. Have any of you gotten buried in the sand this summer? That's always a fun game to play, isn't it? Have you been building any sand castles? Maybe a few. What happens when you build a sand castle? How long does it last? Two minutes. Yeah, that's not wrong, right? Especially if there's any place with a lot of waves or if it rains. The sand kind of just like melts away. It doesn't stay put, right? What happens when you build something with stones? That stays put pretty well, doesn't it? Yeah. So in the story that we're going to hear from the Bible today, we're talking about that Jesus is our cornerstone, that Jesus is a stone. Does that mean Jesus is made of rock? No, no it's, it's a metaphor, right? It's supposed to make us think about that Jesus is steady and strong and will always stay in our lives, right? That we can trust Jesus, that we can build our lives on Jesus. Now, there's a story that Jesus told once where he talked about sand and rock. And so I want to read you that story to help you keep thinking about Jesus as the strong thin thing in our life that helps keep our lives firm. So this is from one of my favorite Bibles. This is the Spark Story Bible. It's a super awesome Bible. Parents, if you want a Bible to start your kids out, this is a great one. We will always make a recommendation for you if you need one. And here is a story that Jesus tells about the house on the rock. And it says, Jesus liked to teach people by telling them stories. Sometimes Jesus told stories called parables. Through parables, people learned God would help them, especially when things were not easy in their lives. Jesus told this parable about two houses to many people as he sat with them on a mountain one day. I want to tell you about two different people. Each one wanted to build a house. One person was very smart, and one person was very silly. The smart person built a house on a sturdy rock. Bad weather came, boom, echoed the thunder and shook the little house with lightning as lightning struck across the sky. Plop, 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 dripped the heavy raindrops. <gasps> raindrops? Do we know anything about that this morning? Yeah, a little bit. Uh. <laughs> the heavy raindrops fell on the roof. Whoosh! sighed the cold wind as it blew against the walls. The house didn't fall down, though, because the smart person had built it on the sturdy rock. The silly person built a house on sand, and something very different happened. Bad weather came, boom, echoed the thunder, and shook the little house, too, as lightning streaked across the sky, plop, 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 dripped the heavy raindrops that fell on the roof, whoosh the cold wind as it blew against the walls. Guess what happened this time? Can you guess what happened? It fell. it fell because the silly person built the house on sand. Crash, it fell down. If you listen to me, Jesus says, you are building your life on the sturdy rock of God. If you don't listen to me, you're building your life on ideas that are like the sand that shifts and blows away. So when we hear our story today from scripture, we can kind of think about that same story, right? That when we are learning from Jesus, that when we're learning more about our faith, we're building our life on a sturdy rock that's always going to hold us and keep us safe. Can you think about that? So anytime you're building a sandcastle for the rest of the summer or whenever you're looking at rocks, maybe on a hike, you can think about Jesus as your rock. Can you do that? Great. Um, do you want to pray with me? You can repeat after me. <laughs> Let's pray. Dear God, we love you. Thank you for being strong, for keeping us firm, and giving us Jesus. We love you. Amen. Thanks, everybody. You can head on back to your seats. You have the same book that I have? Oh, it's such a good book. I'm so glad you have it, too. Uh, and I'm so glad to be with all of you this morning. Welcome to worship today. I'm Pastor Megan. Preaching today is Pastor Kevin. 
Uh, thank you for finding us inside. That last minute rain caught us by surprise, but we will always be grateful for rain in a drought. So thanks for being flexible. Um, I have just a very special couple of welcomes to give this morning. First of all, welcome to those of you who join us online. We're so glad you're with us. And a special welcome to those of you who are here and then going to be gone to our Tim Teamers who are heading to Waco later today. Um, can you all stand up? Can the rest of you stand up too? If you're heading to WAPO today, how about you stand? Thank you. It is a privilege to pray for you. We're so excited for you this week, uh, and we know you're going to have a great time together and a great time learning. Thank you. Uh, why don't you take a moment to greet each other as well? I invite you to stand, to look around, to share God's peace with each other. You can stay standing. Our worship continues with a time of confession and forgiveness. It's an opportunity for us to reflect on the week that has passed and be ready for the week ahead as we bring our whole lives to God. Celebrating the faith that is built in us through the power of the Spirit, we praise God for making our faith firm, and we ask for God's strength when our faith feels shaky. You'll see in our bulletin that when I say we come to you, God, you're invited to respond, grant us your gift of life. God, our creator, we remember with gratitude those people who built faith in our lives. We come to you, God, grant us your gift of life. Jesus, our Lord, we remember with gratitude the many ways you have blessed our lives with the gift of the Holy Spirit. We come to you, God. Grant us your gift of life. Jesus, our cornerstone, we remember with gratitude how you have destroyed sin and death for our sake. We come to you, God. Grant us your gift of life. Jesus, our Savior, we confess the times we have failed to share your life in the world, the times we have not spoken faith into the lives of others, the times when our personal agendas have become more important than yours the times when we become so distracted by the pressures around us that we forget what you have said and done and promised. We come to you, Jesus. Grant us your gift of life. Lord Jesus Christ, we know that when we live outside your promise, our lives become like houses built on sinking sand. You give us the gift of forgiveness. Bless and renew our lives, we pray, so that our faith might have a strong and sure foundation in you. Your forgiveness and grace allow us to grow in your mercy, your love, and your undying life. People of God, in the name of Jesus, the resurrection and the life, your sins are forgiven. We say together, Amen. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Well, good morning, church. How are you today? Good. I just wanted to hear your voice again. You sounded beautiful singing. <laughs> I wanted to hear you, though. I'm Pastor Kevin. Welcome again to worship here at Easter. See, we're continuing a series this month called Building Our Future. If you look on the cover there, you'll see it. We're building our future. And so we're looking at all these different images throughout Scripture about how God builds us together, how God builds the church the living stone, and that's the kind of the phrase I want you to hold on to today, is listen for that word living stone, and maybe just pray and ask God, God, what is it that you want me to hear today 
what promise do you want me to take with me today as we head into the coming week with whatever it may hold? So our reading today comes from God's word. This is 1 Peter chapter 2, verse, starting in verse 4, and it starts with an invitation. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones... Let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying a stone in Zion, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very cornerstone and a stone that makes them stumble and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you might proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Sisters and brothers, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. What is going on in the world right now? Maybe you've been paying attention. If you prefer to not pay attention, you can go back to sleep. It's okay. I understand. I don't want to bother you. But I'm very concerned right now about the status of the Chia pet. I know that's not what you were expecting this morning, coming to worship. But I am concerned about the Chia pet. First and foremost is what is it? Right? It's like an algae spread. That you put on toast? No, you put on what? Uh, you, you spread it onto a, 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 a stone thing, and then, you, then you, you, you water it a little bit? Okay, okay. Second, like the movie Gremlins, right? You toss some water on it, and strange things happen. Strange things happen. That's right. Things start growing out of this stone, and you're wondering. I mean, people pay very good money for these things, right? You know what I'm talking about. There's all sorts of different ones. You've seen it, as the, whether it's a Twins logo now or a Bob Ross with, you know, giant hair on it or all sorts of different shapes, animals of all vari- varieties, all those things. Why am I talking about a Chia pet or a Chia head? Because it's the closest image that we can get to the biblical example here in First Peter 2. It's trying to show us that you can take a chia head, you can prepare the head, you mix the seeds and the paste, and you tend it, and it becomes a living stone. (laughs) A living stone. See, the author of this letter, the author of this letter is writing to a whole bunch of churches all over what is now modern-day Turkey, and he's writing to them because they are growing. They are growing. That's right. In fact, one of the first historical notes about Christians come from Roman leaders in the area of, that w- of the world there who are worried because those churches are growing. More people are coming there. Why? Because people are meeting Jesus and their lives are being changed. People are meeting Jesus and each other, and we call that a church, and their lives are being, are being changed. And when other people... Meet the folks who have met Jesus and their lives are being changed. Guess what? (laughs) They want to be a part of what's going on at that church. They want to be a part of that community. And when those churches were growing, that was being seen as a threat to the local government. They didn't like that Christians were loving one another and that the community was growing and that they were self-sacrificing for the sake of the world that God loves. They were paying so close attention to that. Living stones were seen as a threat to power. Friends, the author of this letter, 1 Peter, had one key purpose, to encourage you, 
to encourage you and to encourage people to follow Jesus. The author does not come down on them or call out some practice that is wrong. But I do have to ask you, are we short on being encouraging in our culture right now? Do we build each other up around here? I don't know about you, but I just went and joined the Rosemount Facebook page, Rosemount Neighbors. Yeah, that was an uh, interesting space, isn't it? You join those groups on social media because you like watching dumpster fires. <laughs> dumpster fires. Aren't they fun to watch? <laughs> yes, they are. That's why you join, right? But you, you, you look there, you're like, okay, people are not encouraging each other in this group because we're short maybe on being an encouraging culture. Being mean is sometimes seen as funny in our culture right now. Isn't that strange? But maybe that's part of the journey that we're taking today. Are we short on being an encouraging culture? And if the answer is yes, then that's why we need to read and revisit this story in 1 Peter today. Because into this complicated world comes the clearest biblical invitation outside of the Gospels. Here it is. Come to the living stone. This is an invitation for you. Come to the living stone. The living stone is Jesus Christ, crucified and risen from the dead. And his life and his death and his resurrection makes forgiveness a reality. His life, death, and resurrection makes it a reality for you and for me. Forgiveness. I mean, that's good news in a world that seems to starve mercy and call it funny. Jesus makes forgiveness not only a reality, but get this, he makes it livable. <laughs> like we can actually do it. <laughs> Live into that forgiveness that he promises. Here's an example. Humans love triangles. You know what I'm talking about? Like there's you. Like <laughs> there's you, there's me. There's whatever's bugging us, right? And we're going to wrestle to see who gets to be dealing with the problem or avoiding the problem. Because I'm going to talk to your mom, your cousin, your dermatologist, your Uber driver. I'm going to talk to everybody but you <laughs> about the problem that we are having so that we can somehow figure this out. Do you have someone in your life like that? Well, if you do, if you do, how can we forgive someone? who is constantly putting that pressure on us, putting us in a triangle and then through the ringer day after day. Friends, hear this invitation clearly. Come to the living stone. Come to Jesus and you'll find that the forgiveness that we find in him alone makes life with all of its triangles livable. Humans love triangles, but you don't have to live like that because by bringing the pain of frustrating relationships to Jesus, he is able to transform them. How many folks would like to sometimes opt out of the family text every once in a while? By bringing our frustrating relationships and the pain of them to Jesus, he has the power to transform them. How many would like to opt out of the late night work emails? Here again, by bringing this to Jesus, we realize that he is the support, the foundation, the cornerstone that makes life-giving choices possible. Here's an example of a life-giving choice. Dealing with frustrating relationships like triangles with our extended family or people we work alongside, Jesus makes forgiveness possible. Colossians 3.13 says, forgive as the Lord forgave you. How do we live into that? Well, we can extend that to others. But another life-giving choice is by creating a boundary or a barrier and saying, right now at this point in our relationship, we need to stop communicating so that we can be healthy again. And then we can rebuild our relationship. Forgiveness does not mean you sweep it under the rug and play nice because we don't play nice. I don't play nice. Maybe you do. Congratulations. <laughs> Sin is in our bloodstream, and the patterns that we learned along the way can be hard to change. Think about the coworker that gets under your skin. Think about all the habits they learned along the way that made them the way that they are. You didn't control any of that. That's part of their journey, too. 
You don't have to go to the person with that problem. You may have to figure out a way to have that conversation. But in the midst of that fear and that moment of despair where you feel like nothing is ever going to change, come. Come to the living stone who is Jesus Christ. It is Jesus who made forgiveness real and livable. So come to the living stone because he is for you and he is there to encourage you. Notice how clear the invitation is. Come to the living stone. Come to Jesus. Not to all the helpful ways that we think that we can build sandcastles like Pastor Megan talked about. To build sandcastles to try to make it through life or how to cope with life. Some of those sandcastles are good. Some of those are poor choices. We know what those are. But Jesus has come to him, to himself, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. That's verse 4. What a description. People don't understand Jesus, but in God's eyes, he is chosen and precious. Isn't that a nice word? Chosen, precious. You know, we might laugh at words like that, but that's only because deep down inside, we desperately need to hear that that is exactly what God thinks of us. Chosen and precious. And friends, you are. And that's why we need to hear those words of encouragement because life is hard. Life is hard. We need hope. So friends, come to Jesus, who is the living stone. In 1977, Rick Hoyt wanted to get into a charity race. It was a 5K. He was really excited about wanting to be a part of this race. You know, a 5K is about a 3.2-mile run. Maybe some of you are already feeling winded or annoyed that that's even a thing. <laughs> but it is a thing, and it's doable, trust me. And Rick got his family to sign him up, but the only problem was that Rick had severe cerebral palsy. And as a person who has been and uses a wheelchair for almost his entire life, he had to try to figure that out because he also could not speak. In 1972, engineers at Tufts University had created a computer for him to tap out the letters on his head so he could start communicating. And his first words was, go Bruins. Okay, right? Okay. 1972, think about all the advances that we have come along with tech for folks like Rick. But friends, let's not kid ourselves. Folks with any kind of disability or struggle are often written off and still written off by our society as unapproachable or unable to do things. We still have so far to go to welcome folks fully into our community and to the community of our society at large. But friends, that's why we need encouragement. Encouragement for Rick, encouragement for us. We need encouragement for folks who use a wheelchair their whole lives just waiting to tell you what's on their mind. What if we saw a person who tries to put us into triangles, a person who has a visible or invisible disability, the way that God sees them, chosen and, oh, what was that again? Chosen and, you're with me. Chosen and precious, because that is what each person is, whether we believe it or not, act like it or not, spend like it or not, plan like it or not. Rick Hoyt wants to be in a 5K in a wheelchair. So what happens? People know this story. His dad pushes him. They get in the race. They finish second to last. Second to last. They need some encouragement. So people rally around them. And because they were encouraged, just as this letter was encouraging to those early churches in Turkey, Rick and his dad, Bob, go on to run 1,000 races together. What? Including marathons? Yeah. And their fastest time? Two hours and 40 minutes. What? <laughs> uh, and they did it together. They also completed, you know, six Ironman triathlons. And they did it together. <laughs> wow. Rick went on to graduate from Boston University, special education degree. And he said, when my dad and I are out there on a run, a special bond forms between us. And it feels like there's nothing that dad and I can't do. Do you hear this, church? 
because Rick and Bob Hoyt have a family bond. That's powerful. But friends, we have an even more powerful bond, one that not even sin, that not even any triangle, that not even death can break through, and that is your baptism into Jesus Christ. What an incredible promise. Look at that next verse, verse 5. Like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house. We are living stones, too, that God is building together. And God's love seen most clearly in Jesus is another way that we're connecting together in this moment. Why? Why would God do this? In order that we might proclaim the mighty acts of God who called, him out, called us out of darkness and into his marvelous light, verse 9. We have a story to tell, do we not, church? Yes, we do. Today, these mighty acts of God, they might be hearing a word of forgiveness or extending that love out into the world that you have. Friends, that we can carry one another because God has carried us in Jesus Christ. No matter what. So, friends, what is going on in the world? God is doing a mighty act in you today, this very moment. God is doing a mighty act in us as Easter people. And God is building us together for this time and place. Is that not good news? Let's pray together. Gracious God, thank you so much for Jesus, who is our living stone, our foundation, our cornerstone. Lord, in this coming week, when we're tempted to build sandcastles to try to deal with life and all of its things, Lord, remind us that you are our foundation. Remind us that we are connected to one another in this place. And Lord, lead us, lead us to love one another as you love us. And all God's people say. Pastor Kevin and I are racing to see who gets to thank you for sharing the gifts that you are going to share with us here this morning. Uh, did I just win? I win. Yes. Because it is indeed all about winning in faith, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you, honestly, uh, earnestly. Thank you for these gifts that you share that continue to do incredible ministry here at Easter. If you're a young person who's got some change that you want to share, I welcome you to come on forward and share those gifts as well. Go ahead and make it as noisy as you like. We are so grateful for these gifts that we bring together to God's glory.
I invite you to stand as together we pray the offering prayer that is printed in your bulletin. God, our provider, you give us everything we need, especially your gift of faith, which you build new in us every day. Bless us and these your gifts, which we receive from you and return to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We continue to pray together. We come before our God from whom every family on heaven and on earth takes its name and to whom we entrust our prayers. God, speak your peace into a world that is stingy with grace, forgiveness, and care. As Easter people, help us see that your son Jesus' victory over sin and death allows for grace, forgiveness, and care in the hardest moments of life. Give us the words of Jesus when we are asked to help someone this week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Renew the energy of all public and private school teachers, facility staff, and office leaders as they prepare to open the doors to a new school year for our communities. Renew your church in all its forms today. Send your spirit to San Marcos in Maya Itza, Divino Salvador del Mundo in Guatemala City, and Nianzua Parish in Tanzania, that we would all continue to work to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Renew the young people, leaders, and mentors who will travel to WAPO this week as they continue to be sustained and taught in their faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open our hearts, God, to the needs of those suffering in body, mind, spirit, and relationship. Give wholeness and comfort, especially to those from this congregation who need your care, including Lois Neubauer, Joan Hoffman, Harold Bunshank, Dirk Gaynor, and Jody Taylor. Let any who mourn be held in your love, including Linda Emiat, Nancy Getz, Stacy Murphy, and Kelly Dene. Bring wholeness and comfort to the people of Maui as they recover from wild flat fires, restore their communities, and grieve their many losses. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We celebrate and thank you, God, for the ways that you bless and send your people into the world. Thank you for the Treehouse youth who have completed their program and are moving on to the next part of their journey. Thank you for Abby Doran as she prepares to share in the global mission ministry in Jerusalem, leaving in the next few weeks. Thank you for the promise of faith and new life for Charlotte Louise on her baptism later today. Renew in each of us the joy of your salvation through the promise of our own baptisms. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Open our hearts, God, that we would receive your wisdom. For those we love who struggle with addiction and its many forms, give us peace. For those who struggle to name an addiction in its many forms, give us peace. For those who have lost to addiction in its many forms, give us peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We bring all these prayers to you, God, trusting that your power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine through Christ Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may sit as we continue to sing together. my life. 
folks it's good to be together today it's good to be here with you and it's good to sing that song man oh but um hey as we're winding down we get to celebrate all the other good things that are happening here at easter too in particular take a look at your bulletin and look at that front page you'll notice there's that connection card on the front believe it or not there is a perforation on that if you don't test me if you don't believe me you can fold it and remove it so if you need to share any information with us if you're a new person who wants to make sure we can reach out to you if you need to update your address or phone number with us if you have a prayer request to share you can use that connection card and in future weeks you can either put it in the offering plate or you can just hand it to me or one of the ushers on the way out and we will see it rightly home but in particular Coming up on September 10th, we are going to join in the 10th anniversary of an event called God's Work, Our Hands Sunday. It's something that's been going on for a decade in the ELCA, in our denomination. It's an opportunity to really engage in serving in our communities. So if you know a person or a place or an organization that, that we could help out on that Sunday, whether right here on site with us or maybe a little bit out in the community, would you share that information with us on that little sheet? If you have a neighbor who you know has a project that we could take care of in a couple of hours on an afternoon, something like that, go ahead and write that down on that sheet and then share it with us. Um, if you don't want to put it on the sheet or if you think of it later, you can always email Rhonda Doran. She's our uh, outreach director. You can share that information with her that way as well. It's going to be a great day on September 10th. We really hope that you will be willing to be a part of that. Something else that you can do uh, anytime in the couple of weeks ahead here is we want to support uh, the young people who are part of the homework help program here at Easter. And one of the ways we can do that is by sharing school supplies with them. Um, can somebody tell me, did we get any school supply sheets? Did we have any of the school supply? We didn't get any. Okay, so here's the deal. Um, wait, no, I'm getting, the, I'm getting the high sign. Yes, Riley collected them for us, Catherine. Yes, yes, the, the dog went and fetched them for us. Um, no, we have some sheets that, that tell you what kinds of school supplies our homework help friends could really use. Grab one of those or you can get it online as well and then bring those school supplies back here. You can drop them off at either site, either at the hill or the lake. Um, and I mean, we all know that right now all the school supplies are on all sorts of sales, right? So just grab some extra markers or pencils while you're at it and then bring them by. Thank you so much for helping these students start the school year off right and by sharing with these young people so they can get what they need. But look, fall is, oh my goodness, coming so fast. And there are lots of really great things going on for you and for your families here at Easter as well. In particular, for kids, we have JAM, that stands for Jesus and Me. Uh, that's for grades kindergarten through fifth grade. We would love to have you. We have that on Sunday mornings throughout the regular program year. You can register for JAM now, I've been told. Is that accurate? Yes, I'm getting nods. Now, you can register for JAM now by going to easter.org slash kids. If you're a middle or high school student, grades 6 through 10, we have confirmation. That's our four-year faith building adventure where you can learn more and build relationships. Go to easter.org slash confirmation to sign up for that. And then high school students, grades 9 through 12, that's Yowie's and Tim team. There's a weekly gathering with leadership development, relationship, and a great time. Rochelle's trying to tell me that I missed something. Oh, not through kindergarten to five, age three through grade five. Even better. 
sign up. We'd love to have you there. It's going to be a blast. And for adults, we haven't forgotten about you. Uh, we are going to have classes in three unique areas of faith, Christian living, Bible, and prayer. You will be able to see those offerings starting this fall. Um, you can see uh, classes, in fact, th in those three areas all the way through May. We're also partnering, partnering with a group called Vine. It's a collective of churches here in the southern Twin Cities offering a variety of ways to grow in faith. So you can pick up a Vine catalog on, a way, on your way out of worship as well. Take a look at that and find lots of ways that you can get engaged and continue to learn about your faith. This is all great stuff, folks. I'm so excited that you're a part of it. I know it means saying goodbye to summer, but it does mean like saying hello to some really exciting stuff up on the horizon. So thanks for being a part of it. And with that, I invite you to stand one more time. Because together, we hear this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. If it wasn't for my failures and mistakes, I would never know the depths of His grace. Now my heart is beating for heaven's sake. Oh, and for the love of God. If it wasn't for my failures and mistakes, I would never know the depths of His grace. Now my heart is beating for heaven's sake. Oh, and for the love of God. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.